Dude, can you leave? Can you leave that door one door open, please? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. Anybody come in? They will when you hear that noise. Yep. We're about to start! Woo! People are like, all right, we can hold it all back up. How's everybody doing? Outstanding, I like that guy. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna give it like two minutes to like let people come in, figure it out, come on in, have a seat. If you don't know each other, we're gonna say hi to the person next to you, come along that line. Come on in, come on in. We saw you back there. Now we have players to come in, I can see them right now. So, uh, first of all, hey, let me ask you a couple questions. Who in the room actually owns a house? How many own more than one? How many own one owner house? You don't want to own a house? God damn. Where's your hand, man? So, um, first of all, on the chair, there's a little scan code. I'll tell you what that's all about at the end. There's a rattle there. I think they saw a rocker or something. My boss is very excited that we're getting him out of the office. They've been in our office for like three years. And nobody knew what to do with them. I go, I know what to do with them. They're noise makers. So can you guys give me a hand for, first of all, I need a little bit of help, right? It's the afternoon, everybody's tired, people want to go home, and they're like, oh, I'm just exhausted, right? So if I say something fun or exciting, can you guys break, you know, shake the crowd maker? Right? There you go. I like that guy. Guys, come on in, come on in, come on in. So I'm going to play like the military, so if you're not going to go, you're not going to play. I am going to start literally at 5 of, which is two more minutes, okay? So whoever isn't in here, there's too bad. Um, so my talk is, um, I talk is the American, what's the American dream, okay? What's the American dream? What do you think the American dream is, man? Support family, own a home, own one income. So when I was a kid, the American dream was serve your country, which I did. Thank you for anybody else. Anybody else here serve their country? By the way, thank you very much. Can you please stand up, sir? Woo! Okay, thank you. Okay. So by the way, my name is Sean Jones. I'm a top producing loan officer for U.S. Bank, aka the Realty Coach. Um, I've been around for about 30 years. I'm older than dinosaurs. When people ask you how long you've been around or if you've been in the business for 20 years, don't stand up. That's the trick. Okay? So, the American dream. What is the American dream? What's it all about? In my opinion, it's, hey, first of all, if I could give somebody an investment that makes you 38% year in, year out, like clockwork, right, you're going to go, oh my God, what's he talking about? If I can show you an investment guaranteed to give you 38% year in, year out, would you take that investment? Yes. Absolutely! Yes. Take the rental maker, right? Holy crap! Yes. What is he talking about? So for any of you that are renting a house right now, if you're not renting, you're spending. What is the difference between spending and investing? The American dream is investing in yourself. What most people do is they spend. And how are they spending? Does anybody understand where I'm going with this? Yes. The difference between renting and investing, okay? When you're spending money on rent, and most people, you know, there's a, there's a challenge, in, you know, here, it's called financial literacy. What's interesting is me and that young gentleman that's sitting right there, we spent four years training the people in the military how to be illiterate, financially illiterate. Because they said, hey, if you get your check on the 30th of the month, and you go drinking, and spend the entire check, which I've done, don't tell my mom, okay? <laughs> right? And you can live on post for the next 29 days and not worry about money. So what happens is a lot of people in the military were trained to be financially literate, including myself. It took me 10 years to figure it out. Um, now that I'm a recovering realtor, um, you know, I'll, I'll touch on that. He's laughing over there. Mike's like, what is this guy talking about? I have started to deal with about two years on the real estate side, on the sales side. So I am a recovering realtor. So, how to buy a house without ever paying or paying cash? Anybody that's anybody actually try to buy a house lately? Raise your hand. How many people got caught in a bidding war? Oh my God, right? And what did the realtor say? 
well, you know, we could, we could offer more money. Or we can waive all our inspections. Or we can give them cash. Does that sound familiar? Right? That's only about 98% of the people I talk to on a daily basis. What's funny is here, I'm actually going to tell you a little bit different, okay? So, I'm going to give you three secrets today. And when I say secrets, they really are secrets. Why am I willing to share my secrets with you? Because for 25 years, I was a real estate agent. And that now might start to make sense, right? Like, he's like laughing. Why am I going to give you the secrets? Because I'm no longer a real estate agent. I'm a mortgage guy. So I can give you the secrets. So here's the funny thing is, I'm going to show you one, how to find off-market properties, and how to buy them at an affordable price without overpaying, and without actually showing up and providing cash in your hand and without waving away your rights. What are the things like, you know, what you won't get today? So first of all, Nick made me promise I can't sell anything. By the way, my name is Coach Sean. That young gentleman back there filming this, he's Roberto, if you need somebody in Jersey City, he's one of my real team coaches. What is a real team coach? It's somebody who actually I coach and work with one-on-one -on -one and taught them how to do 2,000 transactions over a 25-year period without having a team more than five and never buying a deal. How many of you are realtors in the room? Do you know anybody that does any work between 75 and 100 deals with a team with less than five that's never bought a deal? You do now. My name is Sean Charles. I am a recovering realtor. By the way, why do I say that jokingly and seriously? I am in a very, very, very small group of people. The one percent of one for one. There's been for years I would go with it. I, you know, people say I work with Tony Robbins. I didn't work with Tony Robbins' team. I didn't work with his coach. I paid Tony Robbins and three guys paid him twenty-five thousand in two thousand and four to work with him personally. And what's interesting when we did it, we found out a couple of interesting things. Some of the secrets I'm going to share with you. So what's the big white lie? Remember my son, I'm not going to tell you on anything? I lied. <laughs> Here's what I am going to tell you on. The American dream. It's a lie. It's well. All of you can do it. I, and I'm sorry. I am passionate about it. I'm a little bit like, people say, well, you're such a good realtor. How come you're now on the market side? At some point, my now boss came to me and said, hey, Sean, you know, Alex, Alex, when you hang out with her, you're doing a deal, you look like you want to stick a pin in your eye. I go, after 2,000 of them, I'm pull up higher. I go, I've negotiated a million dollars of deals. I go, you know, risk too many things. Like, I've seen the purple kitchen. I've sold the house with the guy with the line on the floor from when he passed up. When they hung himself off the ceiling, we actually sold the house. You're like, really? I go, yeah, absolutely. They still have the, still have the line on the floor. So, you know, and I know that's a little morbid, but at some point, you gotta kinda get reality with yourself. What I figured out was my passion was coaching people and mentoring people helping them to understand, hey, there's a different way, there's a better way. So the white line, I'm gonna sell you on you. What will you leave with here today? I'm gonna to give you three secrets on, I'm gonna show you one, not one, not two, not three ways to find houses off market, I'm gonna show you 51 ways to get off market houses. How do I know they work? I've done every single one of them probably 50 times. Why, do I, why am I yelling? I, I, I don't know why I'm yelling, I gotta look at myself. I'm yelling because sometimes I get excited when I hear people say, how many have heard the weather say there's no, I'm waiting for a house to come on the market, there's no inventory? Anybody? Right? How many have said that to the customer? We're waiting for something to come on the market. Anybody know what's wrong with that statement? Everything. Everything. You're right. Because if you're waiting like everybody else, you're gonna get what everybody else gets, which is no inventory. Right? But if you have, if you are, if you took a different attitude and a different approach and had different expectations when you showed up, and what are those expectations are, hey, there's plenty of dirt on the ground, you just gotta have to pick it up. There are plenty of houses. Let me ask you a question. Anybody bought a house lately? So tell me about the house you just bought. It was a job. Where was it? What town? It was in Sparta. Sparta. Do you think there's any other houses in Sparta? Well, let me ask you this. Was there, mo was there multiple people in that house? Yeah. Right. Anybody want to wonder if there were probably six or seven people that have actually weren't able to buy a house that was there? Because they got caught in the bidding war, right? And what did the real estate agent or what did somebody tell them? Oh my God, 
We lost the deal. We lost your dream home. <laughs> in the neighborhood you wanted to be in, the perfect house, the perfect neighborhood, perfect everything. Oh my God. Guess what? Builders build houses that are cookie cutters. Where there's one, there's gonna be more. We're like cockroaches, they're all over the place. I don't know if you've ever done rentals. You turn the lights on. When I worked in Hoboken, you would turn the lights on and hold the door closed. People like, can we go in? No, I get it. You flip the lights a couple of times, make sure the cockroaches get all out. <laughs> Seriously. So here's the funny thing is, what you're gonna leave with today, I'm gonna give you the secrets to, number one, how to find all the properties. I'll give you the scripts, I'll give you the dialogues. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to work with me personally. I'm not gonna charge you to work with me, by the way. You're also gonna actually get access to an app. It's actually an app that we use and we communicate on. People say, well, Sean, I can't, I can't, you can't divvy up and work in every single market all over the place. No, but I have an app that's on Apple and Android that actually I put two to 300 hours of material into that where you can get access to it. And you can also get me on a call. Roberto, how often, and if you call me or if you text me, how long is it taking to get back to you? Five minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a bad, like, I'm like a cockroach. <laughs> so, Boy Sean Shouts, I kind of alluded to this a minute ago. I am a top producer loan officer with the fifth largest bank in the United States, US Bank. I've done 2,000 transactions over the past 25 years as an individual. I'm, you know, I'm, I alluded to this a minute ago. Negotiated about a billion dollars in deals. Doesn't make me an expert. I figured out a couple billion ways why it doesn't work. What doesn't work in this market. By the way, how do we know it works in this market or any other market for that matter? Because I've been in the business. I, I actually worked in this building 37 years ago when I got out of the Army in construction. I was a union elevator and escalator mechanic. We actually renovated the elevators that are in here and put in those fancy buttons. By the way, those fancy buttons are like 20, something, they're more than 25 years old because I actually helped put them in and I've been on the sales side for 27 years at this point. So, anybody got a question? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that evaluates who I am, right? <laughs> Biggest challenge in real estate today, anybody want to take a while? Yes. No inventory. What's the second one? Oh my God. They, there's no inventory, they want me to overpay, and they want me to waive all my conditions. They want me to waive the, they want me to waive my, my right to an appraisal, they want me to waive my right to an inspection, they want me to, to show up on a lot of cash. Show them I don't have cash. I'm a good old fashioned 5%, 3 5% down FHA buyer, 5% down, 15%, 4%. But show them we're competing with cash. Here's a little secret. Anybody ever heard of the expression, it's not what they want, it's what they need. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Out of curiosity, what do you think a seller wants? Quick clothes. Quick clothes, what else? Okay. All cash, what else? Okay. Maybe. Okay. At least back. At least back, okay. Anybody else? I'm looking for two real key words. They want confidence and clarity, and they want to know they can close like green on a pickle. They don't care about cash. They don't care about what inspections you're going to do, what they're not going to do. They just want to know that if John Carlos says, I'm going to close on the 15th of May, he's going to show up and close, like he said he would. Go figure, integrity. So let me ask you a question. I talked to somebody with a woman gentleman in here a minute ago. And he said, well, you know, when I show up and I become cash, right? And he said, I'm a cash buyer. And he got all excited and his eyes went like this, right? Anybody here buying houses cash? Right? And when you do it, right, you're excited. You're like, dude, I got cash. Dude, I am a rock star. <laughs> you know what's funny? When I was a realtor, guys like you, I would put you over here. Why? Because usually, and it's hard to do with this plane, if you're doing cash and you show up and say, Here's my offer. By the way, I'm cash. Right? I got my other hand out. Usually what happens is cash comes with a condition. And whether that condition is, hey, I don't want any arguments. I, I, wanna, I wanna, want you to fix this. I want you to fix that. And the problem is with Alexa, if Alexa accepts the cash offer and the person who's cash decides that they don't want to close and they back away, they have enough money to do whatever the hell they want. They can go stay in this whole hotel if they want to for the night, or for six nights, or a month, or a year. While Mary and Bobby, who have taken all their money, all their family's money, and been saving and crimping to buy the perfect home in their perfect neighborhood, 
who are super overly committed, a Lexus buyer is a cash buyer. Yeah, if I get it, great. If I get it, if I don't get it, great. I'll find another one. Oh my God, this is our perfect dream home. This is the house we want to buy. This is the one we need. Okay, fine. The reality is, how do you present that person to be better than cash? I'm going to show you how to do it. So, by the way, the one thing, I talked about how to find houses. I mentioned about, hey, be better than cash. I'm talking about how to do it without overpaying. Right? How do you tie it all together? That's the secret for the end. First of all, off market homes. I mentioned this a minute ago, but houses are built in such, and usually in groups. Okay? Usually what builders do is they'll build houses so that when they build them, it's easy to cookie cutter, right? So if you have one of my realty coach rock stars, Roberto said, well, I can't find a house. I said, yes, you can. I said, here's what I want you to do. When Alexa sells the house in that neighborhood, I want you to call Mike and say, hey, Mike, I know you live next door. Did you know that every time, every time Alexa sells a house in your neighborhood, two more will sell right away? And I was wondering, when do you plan on moving? By the way, if you have that phone call 56 times a year, or 56 times, every 56 times, three people will say, yes, I am interested in learning more. And of those three, if you're really good at it, and I say, hey, Ed, if I, if I can actually get you what you want and the time you want, won't that be great? Are you willing to accept our offer? Obviously, you realize what a great opportunity it is, don't you? All we need to do now is sign the contract so I can help you get what you want and the time you want. By the way, does that sound like a script? Yeah. I'm saying it very matter-of-factly this way so that you hear it, it is a script. But when I say, hey, Mike, you know, listen, if I can find what you're looking for and the time you want, are you going to be okay with that? Yeah, of course. Depending on the audience, if I find out he's got like a PhD, hey, Mike, if we were able to put together the quantitative <laughs> right? Speak to the audience. Right? So, off market homes, how else can you find them? This is going to sound morbid for the woman who actually kind of shook a little bit when I said that before about the thing on the floor. Here's a little secret. What's your first name, huh? What is it? I can't hear you. What is it? You got to look at it? Ruth! That's Ruth, by the way, everybody. Right, can you break your shake your rattle right for, for Ruth? You know, Ruth is a hell of a Bruce, I'm only, I'm only saying it because when I said something about the line on the floor, you were like, oh my god, you really said it out loud. <laughs> so here's the funny thing. I have about the 2,000 homes, probably six to 800 of them that I did, were somebody that passed away. Why? 2008 and 9, I am making $80,000 a month. I work a four and a half day a week. Friday, I get in the car, I go to Vermont, or I go down to the beach, smoke a cigar, drink a beer, in the car. You could do that back then. <laughs> Nowadays, no. Uber. <laughs> okay? I also have two kids, so I can't do that anymore. Um, but the reality was, it was a different market. But when I woke up, and all of a sudden my income went from 80000 to eight overnight. Anybody remember 2008 and I opened up a real estate office. I put up 100, I'm sorry, $450,000, $500,000 to open up the first Christie's Great Estates real estate office in Hudson County, New Jersey, New Jersey for that matter. Me, three other guys. Okay? I stood over my kid's crib crying because I thought, oh my God. I went from making $80,000 a month to living on a house in Fort Liberté with a 50 foot dock slip in the back, thinking I'm a rock star. My brother used to call me P. Shoney or P. Diddy. Okay? Because he was like, he used to be an elevator guy. I really like the rock star. I go, yeah, but I earned it. You know? I start my day at like, for me right now, it's midnight. I start at like 3.30 in the morning, so. So here's the reality of it. I looked over my kid's crib and I said, I will never be a function of the market. How many of you guys are a function of the market? Anybody know what I mean by that? If the market goes up 10%, my portfolio goes up 10%. If the market goes down 10%, I go down 10%. That's not a business, that's a roller coaster. So what I did is I made a conscious decision. It took me seven years to figure it out. I wanted to figure out how do I buy properties that doesn't matter if the market goes straight up or straight down or selling properties. And how do I do it where I have one conversation with multiple people and how do I do it because I am not the shake hands, kiss babies guy that you haven't figured it out. I am a father of two. I'm a, I'm a big girl dad. I'm a little nuts. Even the dog is a girl in my house. <laughs> Seriously? And she's 110 pounds. So you try to put her to that, that would give her to her back. 
Anyway, so the, you know what? The reality is this. What I figured out very quickly is people that are in, in situations where they have to sell. What are those situations? I'll give you like a couple of them. He was about to raise his hand. We'll bring in a say, sir. Um, on distress moments. Distress moments. So I'll give you a distress moment. First of all, probate. That's my specialty. What are the four things that people hate to do? Public speaking, have a baby, getting married, getting divorced. What's the last one? Doing what I'm doing right now. I kind of love it. But. So what's interesting, the stress moment, divorces. By the way, doing a divorce, if you get good at divorce, it's actually three transactions. Yes. It's one, to sell Alexa, and what's your first name? Anthony and Alexa's house, we're gonna sell it. Right, and they have to sell it. And Alexa says, that's a son of a bitch, guess what, I got all the money. I need a house, though, to live with my kids. Okay, great, we find a house. Well, do you have income? Yeah, he's giving me five, he's giving me five grand a month. Okay, great, we'll get your house. That's son of a bitch, I, I have to give her half my income. I gotta go live somewhere. Don't worry, we'll find you a studio. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? You know how many times I had that conversation? And by the way, to do it with a smile, Ed is laughing. To do it with a smile is, is actually creative. Anybody ever heard of an escalation clause? Yes. Anybody had the realtor say, "Oh my God, you can't do that. Yeah. We will not accept that." Has anybody gotten the the realtor's offer sheet? This is what the selling realtor says we should do. By the way, anybody, if you're a real estate investor, you guys ever heard of auctioneering? Auctioneering, unless you have a license, it's illegal in most states, especially in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, tri-state area. So the next time the realtor says, you cannot use an escalation clause, Sean, say bullshit. I shouldn't have said that out loud, but I get frustrated because <laughs> You cannot, actually, if it's a contractual obligation that you put in the contract for your buyer, the listing agent can't say, no, you can't do that. It's illegal. It's steering. It's auctioneering. So the next time that they say, no, you can't do that, you can say, thank you very much. I have the right to present my offer to the agent and the seller. I'd like to do that. I'd like to exercise that right. By the way, you can do that. Most people don't know that. Instead of sending a pretty letter, Get on the phone and say, I want my offer presented to the person. Yes, they may give you a hard time, they may tell you to go scratch, but if you want to buy a house in your perfect neighborhood, in your perfect house, this is one of the ways to do it. What is an escalation clause, by the way? Yeah, what is Go ahead. Sorry, you're saying that you can present your offer directly to the seller? And yes, you can. Buy -buy? Yes, you can, as long as your realtor, let's say Sam is your realtor, is on the phone with you or in person with you. As a matter of fact, when I was a realtor, I would do it all the time because I didn't trust Sam. You know, I can see you shaking your head like, yeah, I've been down that road. <laughs> right. There's a reason I'm, I'm alluding to certain things. Which I'm trying to be polite about it, but at the same time, um, so I'm going to move this along a little bit more. The escalation clause is really simple. I'm going to make an offer. And by the way, everybody say, hey, thanks, Nick. Nick, I haven't sold them anything, I promise. Thank except on the American dream that it's alive and well. Everybody shake around like your floor, or the floor for the next. Alright, so here's the here's the deal. Escalation clause basically says, hey Mike, I'm gonna make an offer on your house. And I'm gonna make my offer, let's say the let's say the listing price is three hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna make an offer at three hundred thousand dollars, and I'm willing to make five thousand over and above the highest offer. What's your first name? So over and above sales offer, as long as she's got a valid offer, I'll pay five grand more not to exceed 350. So basically what you're saying is, at this price, I want the house. At this price, I actually love the house. And at this price, I don't want it. So really what you're doing is you're guarding yourself from overpaying, but at the same time, you're also putting yourself in a position for success. I have a, I keep saying, I'm gonna dress you for success. I'm gonna prepare you for success, right? On the escalation clause, by the way, at the end of this, you're gonna have the opportunity to have God get on the phone with me. It's a complicated conversation, it really isn't complicated. I will explain it to you in about four seconds. <coughs> when we can do it one-on-one, -on -one, it's a little easier. Better than cash, what is better than cash? How do you get better than cash, Sean? Oh my God. We talked about it a minute ago. If I go to Alexa, by the way, sellers want cash. What they need is confidence that you're gonna be able to do it. So here's how it works with me and my customers. 
Roberto, we just went through this with Roberto's customer. Roberto's customer was in a multiple bid situation. Because his customer was actually talking to me three weeks ago, we actually got him fully approved, fully qualified, only subject to him finding a house. Basically, my company said, hey, Ruth, we're gonna give you a mortgage. We've actually done your credit. We've done the call, you know, I call it, you know, I, I, again, we're all adults here, right? I'm like a proctologist in disguise, right? At least my underwriting department is, right? <laughs> so but once they get done doing their inspection, we can actually say you're fully qualified. And you're better than cash because, what's your first name? Lauren. So I said, hey, you know what, guess what? Roberto, don't worry. By the way, Lauren is fully approved. All we need is appraisal on the house and the title work. If I could do that in five to seven days, we can close it in a week if you really wanted to. But what about, but the other people are cash. Do you understand the problem that cash presents for you? Well, what do you mean, John? Lauren has actually invested herself in this whole process and her family, and they're gonna move into the schools. By the way, do you, do you, do you kind of play on the heartstrings of the seller? Absolutely. Whether you're an investor or you're a buyer that's working with a realtor, either way. Okay, you use everything in the bag that's gonna help you to, you know, like there's 14 clubs in a bag in a golf bag. There's a reason why there's 14 clubs in there. They didn't give you two clubs and say, here, go at it. They gave you 14. There's different ways of doing things. So here's the funny thing on better than cash. Also, like for Roberto's person, when you have somebody like me calling, I actually said, who's the other agent? And Roberto said, oh, it's Mary Jo Blush. I said, you know what? Better guy, I've done 15 transactions with Mary Jo because I worked in that market and she knows me. What's funny is when I call Mary Jo on her phone, she immediately picks up the phone because she thinks, oh my God, it's Sean Channels. He probably has a buyer for me, right? What's funny is when she picks it up, I say, hey, by the way, Ruth, just want to let you know, I hired a real estate sales, but I got great news for you. I'm handling the mortgage. And by the way, what is the difference between my credibility and Roberto's credibility is now it's our credibility. And what I'm doing is giving Roberto, what do I say the seller wants? Confidence to know that it's gonna close like green on a pickle. Can I get a, right? Green on a pickle, man. How do I know it's gonna close? Because Sean's done it 2,000 times. And he's already got our buyer approved. And they've been fully underwritten. And we got a letter from the bank. And they're the fifth largest bank in the United States. And by the way, they don't have their other hand down. They want confidence and clarity. So whether you're trying to do it in real or you're trying to do it on your own, either way, by the way, when you're working with me or you're working with our team of experts, when I say my team of experts, I introduce, let's say, let's say for argument's sake, Alexa was to come and work with me as one of my realtor partners. What does that mean, Alexa? I actually help you build your business, would that be okay? I show you the things that I use to help probably 1,500 agents go from zero to doing six transactions in 90 days. Are you okay with that? Guess how much I'm gonna charge you? Zero. Because Nick said I can't charge him. And the guy's are filming me right now, but it's true. Zero. One hundred percent zero. Right? Hold that thought. So what's the one thing, by the way? Why is it so important? Anybody, anybody want to guess what the one thing is? The one thing is not a what. The one thing is a who. In this case, it's me. And it's my team of experts, my realty coaches are what I call them. I call them the people that are my preferred partners, like this. Mr. Moore just showed up. Can you, can, can you guys give a rattle to Mr. Moore over there? So, Mr. Moore is the guy when somebody, Roberto says, hey, can you help Bobby and Sue get a mortgage loan? And I go, yeah, what, they, what, they, what happened with this student loan here or whatever? And they go, well, you know, we had a little bit of a fine, but then we're back on track. I go, okay, no problem. So when that happens, I said, you know what? We can't do the loan just yet. We can get everything else ready. But for right now, you need to go see Mr. Moore because Mr. Moore is a credit coach. And he is one of our Realty Coach Rockstars. By the way, what is the difference between a Realty Coach Rockstar and a Real Estate Rockstar? Realty Coach Rockstars are the partner. We're the realtors, the mortgage guys, we're the appraiser, we're the home inspector, we're the people. By the way, does anybody buy properties out of state? Would you like to know the top, would you like to know the top agents that list all the properties out of state in the state you're looking at? Would you like to go to one person that can actually do it? And say, hey, come your first name. Betty. Betty, if I what, what state are you buying in? Colorado. Colorado. What's part of Colorado? Colorado Springs. 
So if you're going to buy in Colorado Springs, by the way, the person that you want to go see, believe it or not, is Gene Tanner. Why do I say Gene Tanner? Gene Tanner's done 4,000 transactions over the past 35 years. She is the top realtor in Colorado Springs and in Utah. She's in both states. Why? Because they're feeder markets. So depending on what state you're in, depending on where you're working or where you want to work, or where you want to buy properties, if you call me and say, hey, Sean, I know it may be off the wall, but do you know anybody in Arkansas? Yes, I do. How about Joplin, Missouri? Yes, I do. How about New York City? Anybody ever heard of Elon Braca? You know who Elon Brock is? Elon Brock, by the way, started the KW office in New York City 15 years ago. How do I know that? It's because Elon sat with me at a cup of coffee and said, in a, in a broken, like, Yiddish kind of accent, and said, I'm going to be the number one broker in New York City. Guess what? Did he? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, had, he actually just sold the business with a thousand agents in it in KW. How did you get it? Guess what? It's really simple. First of all, outside on the table, literally around the wall here, there's a scan code. It actually looks like that. It looks like this one. <laughs> if you scan that, or if you're sitting on it, you can actually just scan it. It's going to take you to my schedule. If you're old school and you don't want to do that, you want to just come up and say, Hi, Sean, my name is. I'd love to meet you. I'm old school. I'm 57. My first real estate deal, I did with a pager. My cell phone, my first, you know what I think, my cell phone. When I finally got one, I had a car battery attached to me. Because that was the only way you could carry it around. He's laughing back there. It's true. Absolutely true. So, what's the guarantee? The guarantee is really simple. I have done this 2,000 times. I've helped 1,500, 2,000 realtors across the country. If you haven't figured it out, the, my people say, well, why did you move from mortgages? So good in real estate. As I explained to you, my now boss, who I played off with, said to me, he goes, you know, when you for for about the last 15 years, what I did was I coached my business partner sales team. So the aluminum side guy, the landscaper, anybody that's a sales guy, I would train them on how I did business in real estate, and I would train their people to do it so that they would do business. And I would subliminally say, Hey Ruth, by the way, obviously when you're selling them and you're putting in a fence, you want to ask them, hey, you're putting in a fence to keep the property or sell it. Oh, you're going to sell it. You know, you should talk to Sean. You want to keep it, oh, now you're going to still have that same conversation. Hey, you know, your property's going to appreciate the value. You might want to take some of the trapped equity out of it and reinvest it over here. What do I mean by that? So here's the last guarantee. How many people in this, in this room have customers that said, or that have money in their house, this, I don't want to get rid of my trophy rate of 3% or less. Anybody? Right? And they're like, no, I'm not going to. Oh, why would I do that? I'm not going to get rid of that. In the United States right now, the average property went up $274,000 on average in the United States. What's interesting is the average person in the United States is $92,000 in debt. So the trophy rate, as I call it, I've said to people, you might want to take it and put it on the mantle because it's very expensive. I go, what are you talking about? You go, well, Ed, hey, do you understand that your mortgage right now at 3% is two, two grand a month? And it's really only 1600 because you're getting a tax write off? So here's the funny thing you also are spending $6,000 on extraneous debt on credit cards. By the way, the credit cards, anybody looked at the credit card interest rate lately? 27% is the average. Basically, by the way, when I first got my real estate license, more than 21 percent was usury. Now it's just normal, right? It's like it's really not fun, but it's normal, right? So, Ed, if I can show you how to actually roll in, pay off all your debts, all your personal debts, without actually using any money out of the bank, and actually refinance your house, I'm going to give you a rate that's almost two to two and a half times more than what you're already paying. But here's the catch. I just did this, by the way, with somebody. They had ninety-two thousand dollars to the nickel. We refinanced their house. It was a two and a half percent interest rate. I gave them a six point eight seven five percent rate. That's huge, big difference. But guess what? They were paying seven thousand dollars a month in credit card bills. And guess what? They were just treading water. They weren't paying any any principal, and they weren't sure how to get out of it. When I said to the guy on the phone, 
I'm going to refinance your loan. I'm going to give you a 6.875. I'm going to pay down all your personal debts. And the only thing you're going to have is your mortgage. By the way, that mortgage payment is $4,500 a month. He goes, oh my God, that's twice as much. More. I go, yeah, but do you understand something? It's $4,500 a month. The sixth grade you were paying before had zero tax benefit. He goes, you get zero tax write-off on that money, Mr. Jones. I go, the $4,500 that we're paying on your mortgage, get a 38% tax bracket. If you're, if you're, unless you're on food stamps, you're in a 38% tax bracket in the United States, right? But you got a three week rate, right? Like this, right? Right? So that 38% on four grand, call it 40% for math, that's 1600. His mortgage payment now, his mortgage payment is three grand, net net. Before he was paying 2000. Except that he's saving six grand a month. Do you know the person on the other end of the phone was crying? And he was a grown man? And I said, oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> he goes, yes, I can see daylight again. I'm not waking, I, I can see myself not waking up with a pound of chest pain. By the way, the bonus is really simple. I'm not going to show you one way, two way, three ways to find a house. Book a call with me. I promise you in 20 minutes I'll let it blow your mind. Or you, I'll just say, hey, I can't help you. And I'll tell you where to go or who to find. I will introduce you to the who's. I have, I, anybody a Rolling Stones fan? I have no friends in high places. You should know where that line comes from. I have relationships all over the country in all different crazy spaces. Some of those people are here. First of all, Roberto, thank you very much for supporting us. Mr. Moore, thank you very much. By the way, these guys are vetted real estate experts. Okay. Here's the other piece of the puzzle, though. I, I get care less if I sell you another house. It's not going to change the way my kids are. I don't care if I give you another mortgage. But if I can help you, to get from me where you are to where you want to go. First of all, won't that be great? Yeah. Like a rabble, yeah, right? Yeah. And if I can do it where, by the way, we do it with integrity. So there's two things I'm going to leave you with. When I would go to a listing appointment, I would take a booklet that was about 40 pages long to tell you why Ed, you should hire me, oh my God, I'm a genius, right? Then I got better at it as I got older. I knocked it down to 20 pages. Then I knocked it down to six words which was God, family, business. If I didn't do it in that order, I just didn't show up. Amen. Right. And then, you know, I'm like an old school count. My wife's like, you shouldn't really say that in public. I was raised that way, that's what it is. But here's the funny thing is, I wake up every day loving what I do now, and I hope that I can inspire somebody else and they, they kind of go from where they are to where they want to be. Here's the last piece of this puzzle. The gentleman said I have one minute. I was a ranger in the army, Mr. Moore also served in the military, thank you, Mr. Moore. Grew up! Right? If that gentleman and I are standing in a minefield, and I'm on this side of the minefield, tell me your first name again. Edwin. Edwin! We're standing in a minefield. I'm on, I made it across, and Edwin's on the other side, and it's snowing out. Edwin, do you want to make your footsteps, you want to walk in my footsteps, or you want to make your own? Yeah, I'm going to follow yours. You're going to follow mine. Yeah, yeah. Right, most people get halfway across and they go, ooh, I got an idea. So. <laughs> If you, um, if you want to find out what those footsteps are, and you want to have somebody help you lead you through the path, I'd like to apply for the job as your realty coach and your mortgage guy, and your consultant, whatever you want to call me, I don't care. I'm a girl dad, like I said, you can call me whatever you want, it doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> um, scan the code, if not, the girls will come see me next, come see me, I'm right over here. And let me help you to find a new place in your life. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Thank you.